In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at the area and perimeter of 2D shapes, but we're going to be looking at how, how they change when we adjust the dimensions of those specific shapes. So let's go through one example. If we look at a rectangle, let's come up with certain dimensions for it. Let's say we have four and six for our rectangle. If we wanted to find the area of this rectangle, well, the area equals length times width. So in this case, six times four, which equals 24. If we wanted to find the perimeter, perimeter equals two times the length plus two times the width because they're basically equal on either side. So in this case, two times six plus two times four, we get 12 plus eight, which is 20. So that's the area and perimeter for our rectangle as it is normally. Let's look at what happens if we double one dimension. So let's say we make our one dimension eight and the other dimension stays at six. How does this affect our area and perimeter? Well, if we look at our area, it's still length times width. Eight times six would be our new area. And we get an area of 48. If we look at perimeter, perimeter equals two times the length plus two times the width. So two times eight plus two times six, 16 plus 12, and we get 28. If we double both dimensions, what's going to happen? So again, we have our rectangle. It would now be eight by 12. Eight was what we doubled from the original one and 12 is what the new one is now doubled to. If we look at our area, length times width again, 12 times eight is 96. And perimeter, two times the length plus two times the width equals two times 12 plus two times eight. So we get 24 plus 16 is 40. So these are our new, our new areas and perimeters when we adjust the dimensions of our rectangle. So we have our area, we have our perimeter, and we just wanna see how does the perimeter and area change when we adjust the dimensions. So when we double one dimension of a rectangle, what happens to the area? So if we're going from 24 to 48, hopefully we see that the area doubles area doubles when we have one dimension or when we double one dimension sorry what happens when we double both dimensions of the rectangle what happens to the area well we go from 24 to 96 and if we kind of look at how it changes we should find that it quadruples or basically it multiplies by four the area multiplies by four. I'll attempt to spell quadruples. Quadruples or multiply by four. So that's what happens to the area when we double one dimension and when we double both dimensions. If you double one dimension of the rectangle, what happens to the perimeter? Well, here we go from 20 to 28. So how does that affect, or how has that changed? Well, we can see that we have 20. If we double one dimension to eight, we're adding that to our perimeter. So if we double one dimension of the rectangle, the perimeter increases by the new dimension. So the new dimension was eight, that's what our perimeter increased by. 
What happens when you double both dimensions? What happens to the perimeter? Well, we went from 20 originally to 40 when we double both dimensions. So when we double both, the perimeter doubles. So do you think this will happen with all 2D shapes? Now again, there's no right or wrong answer, it's just kind of you guessing or predicting what you think will happen with other two-dimensional shapes. So we're going to go through and look at those again. So we're going to look at two different two-dimensional shapes, a square and a circle. And what we're going to do is go through basically the same process and see what happens to the area and what happens to the perimeter. So if we look at a square, let's pick an easy one, let's say 3 by 3. The area, 3 by 3, length times width, or you could say side squared is equal to 3 times 3, which is 9. For perimeter, again, you could say 2 times the length plus 2 times the width, or because all the dimensions are the same, you could just say 4 times the side length. In either case, you'd have 4 times 3, which equals 12. So our perimeter is 12. If we double our dimensions, so basically if we double one dimension to make it 6, it's going to be 6 all the way around because, again, it is a square. Let's check to see what our new area is. Area equals side squared which equals 6 squared, which equals 36. If we look at the perimeter, perimeter equals, if we're doubling the dimensions, 4 times the side length, oops, or 4 times 6, which equals 24. If we triple the dimensions, so we go one step further, so it becomes 9 by 9. What do we think will happen? Again, we can go through side squared, 9 squared, which equals, if it's 9 squared, 9 squared is 81. For our perimeter, 4 times s. or 9 times 4, which is 36. So we, hopefully we can start to see a relationship between these original ones and what happens when we double and triple. And hopefully we start to see a pattern here. Let's look at a circle and see how things change. We have a dimension of 3, or a radius of 3. So in our area, a equals pi r squared, so a equals 3.14 times 3 squared, or 3.14 times 9, and we get 28.26. For our perimeter, oops, perimeter equals 2 pi r, we get 2 times pi or 3.14 times the radius which is 3 and you get 18 let me write it out 2 times pi times 3 we get 18.84 now if we double the radius again we've seen in the past that when we double it the area quadruples or multiplies by 4 and the perimeter doubles so let's see if we get the same results because now we're dealing with an entirely different shape. It could, it could make sense that a rectangle and a square have similar properties because they are similar in shape. But let's see if a circle carries the same properties. So again, we've doubled our radius to 6. Area equals pi times 6 squared. And we get 113. Oops. 
113.04. And if we multiply our original one, 28.26 times 4, we do get 113.04. If we look at our perimeter, so perimeter or circumference equals 2 times pi times 6, does it double? We get 37.68. And again, we should see that yes, it is double our perimeter. If we triple the radius, Our radius is now 9. I'm not even going to go through and fill it out because I know based on what I've done before the original area or we'll say AO will be multiplied by 9 because it increased by a multiple of 9. If we look back at our last ones we had 9 doubled, it went to 36, where we multiplied it by 4. When we tripled it, we went to 81, or multiplied it by 9. So here I'm going to multiply it by 9 based on the pattern that I'm seeing. So 28.26 multiplied by 9 gives me an area of oops, 250, 54.34. And if you're not quite sure or you wanted to double check, you could have done it the other way again, pi times 9 squared. And you would have gotten the exact same answer. For our perimeter, again, if we look back at the square and what we saw in the square, we saw that the perimeter, when we tripled the dimensions, our perimeter tripled. So if that's the case, I'm going to make the assumption that it's going to be the original area multiplied by 3 because I'm tripling the radius. So 18.84 times 3 gives us 56.52. If we double check, perimeter or 2 times 2 times pi times 9 we do find that we get the same answer so we do see that when we triple our dimensions our perimeter triples when we triple our radius or triple our dimensions our area increases by a factor of 9 or increases by a multiple of 9 So summary, when we say double the dimensions, the perimeter also doubles. When we double the dimensions, the perimeter also doubles. And when we double the dimensions, so again, the area quadruples. And we can see basically that whatever the, whatever the, you could say whatever the change is, the perimeter will mimic that change, but the area will be that change squared. So what I mean by that, if we go and we look by the, at, say we just bring it down at the change, we'll touch on those, um, what will happen later. So if our change is multiplied by two, our perimeter will also multiply by two, but our area will quadruple or multiply by 4. If our change is an increase of 3 or a triple, our perimeter will also triple, but our area will increase by 9. 
if our change is increased by 4, our perimeter will multiply, be multiplied by 4, and our area will be multiplied by 16. Oops. In other words, we can put it as 4 is 2 squared, 9 is 3 squared, and 16 is 4 squared. So that's kind of where those answers are coming from. And we've seen the patterns and we've seen the, um, the results in our investigation. So what will happen to the area of a square when its side is half the original? Because we're dealing with half the original, 1 half squared is basically 1 quarter. So the area will be a quarter. What happens to the area of a circle when its radius is half the original? Well, I'm just going to take this same answer, copy it, and basically paste it in because it's going to, the same thing is going to happen. We saw the same thing happened when in our circle as it did in our square. The relationship between increasing the, rate, uh, the dimensions had the same effect on the perimeter and area. So if a circle's radius or a square's side is one-third the original length, the area will be, and if we follow the pattern where basically it is the change squared, so one-third, and if we square that, one squared is one, 3 squared is 9, so that means our answer must be C. So again, that's the relationship that happens um, or that occurs when we change the dimensions of a two-dimensional object and what happens to the perimeter and area. So again, please make sure you just kind of understand that um, relationship. And again, if you can't quite remember that, you can always, again, use trial and error by actually going in and adjusting the dimensions of a shape to see what happens. Thank you.